Hi, everyone. My name is Chris King. I am the president of the Democratic Business Council of Northern Virginia. Welcome to another installment of our DemBiz Briefs series. This is a, a new series in which we uh, speak with local business owners around Northern Virginia, as well as key elected officials to find out what's happening on the ground uh, as it relates to business and the coronavirus crisis. Today, I'm very pleased to be joined by Arlington County Board Member Matt DeFerranti. Matt, thanks so much for taking a few minutes today. Thanks for having me. Good to be with you. All right. So let's start with uh, with the health part of it. Today is Saturday, April 4th. What are the latest numbers in Arlington County as they relate to COVID-19? Sure. So um, we are at 150 known positives. Um, that number changes uh, half day or even hourly by hourly. Mm -hmm. um, and we have had uh, a couple of fatalities, we, we know that that's a risk. And we're, I think most relevant, we're past the point where we know that there's community spread. And so that social distancing is so very important. Okay, and are you finding that you've got adequate resources for testing, at least at the moment? Uh, yes, we have adequate resources for testing, um, but not ideal. Um, you know, data is so critical we have two testing sites. We were the first in Northern Virginia to stand up the testing site at the Buck property, which is near uh, the former Buck property, which is near Washington and Liberty High School. Um, and we have a second site uh, a little further in North Arlington. Uh, so we do have enough to get, make sure healthcare workers and those in need, real dire need of tests, uh, get them. Um, the broader data that we all wish we could have, we're still working on it. And that is a challenge nationally too. Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's move over to the business part of this. What are you hearing on the ground from local business owners, say over the past week, two weeks? Um, so a couple of folks, folks have talked about, business owners are, um, uh, they show commitment and conviction to work through this, mm -hmm. but they look at you and convey how hard it has been in many cases to lay people off. Uh, this is, we're seeing already numbers of unemployed Arlingtonians. And these are our neighbors, our friends, uh, in some cases, family. So um, business owners have mentioned retail as a real challenge. And then also you see the huge challenge that has received actually the news hour covered um, many of the restaurants and bars that are really struggling. Right, and so vibrant, uh, especially through the RV corridor and um, up on uh, Glebe Road, um, restaurants everywhere, and such a big, big part of Arlington County's economy, it seems like. Absolutely, and you know, we should also mention that uh, tourism is a huge driver of our economy, and that's mm -hmm. something that has really, really been suffering. Hotels um, are empty, and uh, that's, that's gonna have an impact as well. Okay, and we've seen over the past couple of days that the the pay, uh, Paycheck Protection Program as part of the stimulus has been rolling out slowly, but it's been kind of a rocky start. Are you hearing anything about that? Um, have not heard a lot, uh, actually have not heard anything about that yet. People are eager for it to come, but still trying to get their heads around it. Sure. Um, because uh, thinking that it's out there is different from looking at the specifics and actually trying to apply. Okay. Now, this is a, the federal stimulus is one component of the response. You've also got a, a state component and then a county component. What are the, what's the general division of responsibilities among federal, state, and county at this point? Well, I think federal kind of sets the big context. So federal law applies to declaration of disaster, for example, under, under FEMA, and that which we did very early um, relatively early on, the, on, on a Friday evening and Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, several weeks back. But big context federal. In Virginia, the governor has a strong role and, and we uh, have a lot of authority to implement and we have policy authority, but um, the governor, of course, uh, has this say on how long to keep schools closed and mm -hmm. the, uh, eventually the emergency shelter, stay in place, stay in your home order is the governor's purview. But we in Arlington, we're leaning in to what we can do to help address uh, the business community. And uh, know it's a huge challenge. I do think it's important to 
just reiterate that um, health and safety and keeping individuals um, alive and some is just a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that there are some in individuals more at risk than others, but um, I am one who believes that we need to keep people safe in the short term, else we could see a, a really painful longer term. People are worried about, of course, potential second wave. Right. We need to really take this seriously to keep people, minimize infections and, and honestly do all we can to, to keep people healthy, frankly. Okay. So if I'm a, a business owner or I'm a, a member of one of these vulnerable populations, uh, you know, the county has got a lot on its plate, but what, what county-based programs might I look for for assistance, uh, either on the business side or the, the health and human services side? Well, I, there's, there are a couple of, of economic development programs that we have operated, his, operated historically. One is called the Gazelle Grants. Um, and I think tailoring those programs to this moment is what you're going to see over the coming days from uh, as we present our budget. Um, okay. And, you know, the, you mentioned the federal piece, which really encourages keeping people employed if possible, if at all mm -hmm. possible. Um, the county is already focused. We did a, Arlington Economic D Development did a significant survey, and we're already focused on how we can help um, provide those uh, incentive, targeted incentive, small incentive funding, really to help people hang on in this difficult time. Okay. And as you step back and look at the, the budget for the county, uh, with businesses hurting, the tax base is going to be impacted. You've got a very, very uh, vibrant real estate market, especially commercial real estate along the RB corridor and down along Columbia Pike and so on and so forth. Uh, any estimates or guesses or, or projections about how those could be impacted going forward? Well, there's going to be an impact. Um, we've done more than back of the envelope uh, estimates, but not the sort of um, things that would lead to a, a detailed and perfect business plan. We've got a one budget year, which ends this coming July, and Arlington is as well positioned economically as I really think you could be in Virginia and almost as well as you could be nationally. We have been uh, reducing the commercial vacancy rate and growing. That's probably going to put us in decent shape for this pat this fiscal year, but the one that starts July 1st is going to be a real challenge. And there are portions of the budget that are really crucial for the, our business community. And uh, we're aware of that. And it, the, some of those, it's going to be um, a sort of basics focused uh, budget. But uh, we know that if we don't continue our our economic growth, then none of the other investments are really going to um, going to move forward. Sure, and I, and I know that in the commercial real estate world, all eyes seem to be on April and May collections to see how much of a drop off there might be, especially in the multifamily sector and uh, the office sector and retail sectors as well. All right, so let's let's uh, go forward a little bit, uh, assuming that the curve stays manageable on COVID nineteen and we get through this, what kind of recovery plans might we see? Uh, what uh, resources might business, my businesses have uh, from the county or elsewhere to get back on their feet once they can? Um, well, I, th I mean, I think uh, there's already, um, we've done a, the, the survey I mentioned, Arlington Economic Development has done a significant survey to, to understand what the challenges are. Mm -hmm. BizLaunch has been a, a really strong piece of what we're doing. We've added additional um, uh, resources in last year's budget. That's going to be a component. Um, and uh, if you go to our COVID-19, just Arlington COVID-19, you already see some of the resources that Arlington Economic Development is working on. But in the, in the coming months, we're going to have to go back at this and be uh, relentless in understanding what the unique challenges are and addressing them. I, um, a huge part of why I sought the, the board is because uh, our commercial vacancy rate had been too low. And um, in part, um, Amazon, I thought was the right decision. And in part, that had 
helped put us on the right trajectory. Now we as policymakers have to respond and help um, the engines of our economic growth or else we won't be in, able to invest in the services that have made Arlington a great place to live. Sure, okay. All right, so as mentioned uh, previously, we wanna keep these brief and just kind of give snapshots as we go along. I wanna shift gears here real quick. We've got a presidential election this year. Uh, what is the board, uh, if to whatever extent the board can control any of this, uh, you've got COVID-19, which is keeping people at home. Uh, what about, what are the mechanics of holding an election this year from your perspective? Well, um, there's, the legislature passed some changes to our election procedures that will, that will apply to the fall elections. And that includes um, absentee voting without having to list a specific excuse. Um, or reason. Um, yeah. And so there already were and are going to be some changes for the fall elections, but I think it's a little premature to know exactly how things are going to play out in the fall. There would be a longer period of early voting um, in the fall, and that may help us. Um, but I think it's a little premature. Certainly, there are many people who are proponents of making voting by mail. Uh, omnipresent, ubiquitous. And right. I think there's some benefits, but it's a governor's decision and we're just turning to that now. We've gotten a couple of notes about that so far. Okay. All right. So just uh, kind of wrapping up, I uh, want to give you the last word on what do you think people need to know about what's going on? What are the best resources for them to, to go to uh, at this point in time? Sure. Um, folks need to know you should stay home and be very, very disciplined about social distancing when you're outside your home. Um, when there are specific exceptions for food and medicine, but if you have, to, and we all need to, to get out for exercise, do it keeping that social distancing piece. That's one thought. And then the second part of your question is our, our COVID-19 webpage, just COVID-19 Arlington. Okay. We send out an email that is now going to over 100,000 people. That is, it has a ton of links. It's a great resource. Okay, fantastic. Well, Matt DeFerranti of the Arlington County Board, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with DEMBiz, you can visit us online at dembiz.org. That's D-E-M-B-I-Z.org. And we will continue with these uh, DEMBiz briefs as long as this coronavirus uh, continues to be a problem both uh, locally and nationally. So keep an eye out for those. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.